It's April, which that means that summer is right around the corner. Baseball season is already underway, the sunsets are getting later, and summertime barbecues are getting even closer. What summer also means, especially for central New York, is the New York State Fair. But the New York State Fair doesn't happen until late August into September. So what if you're really feeling that, that fair-style food before the State Fair comes to town? What if you don't want to pay for that fair-style food? Today, we're going to be cooking a Central New York favorite chicken speedy sandwiches with loaded french fries and State Fair-style lemonade. Go wash up and get ready to eat, because you're watching Dom's Dinner Bell. So before we get cooking, I would just like to give a big thank you to everybody who has supported me and helped me out through the entire process of this show, especially during its first season. I expect there to be a second, but a big thank you to my family, mom and dad, thank you so much for watching every week. Uh, my wonderful girlfriend Jess, her friends Madeline and Sienna, they have a watch party every time. I really appreciate it. They give me a, a lot of feedback that helps the show get better, and I just can't thank anybody enough for everything you've done for me during the process of this show. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now, let's get cooking. What we're doing today are chicken speedy sandwiches from the New York State Fair. So of course, you're gonna need your speedy sauce. Now speedy sauce is gonna be about $3.57 at Walmart. It's a little more expensive because it's a name brand. You're also gonna need chicken breasts. This pound caught me about $6.44 at Walmart. You're gonna need rolls as well. This bunch cost me $3.48 at Walmart. They're nice, big, hoagie rolls, soft too. We're gonna to toast those up and put the speedies on there. You're gonna need potatoes. There's only four here, but I got a big bag of them at uh, Aldi for $2.99. You've also got lemons for our lemonade. The lemons only cost me 58 cents a piece at Walmart, so you can get a bunch of those for wicked cheap. For the loaded fries as well, you're going to need sliced cheese, and bacon bits to really get that loaded feel, and a little bit of sugar for the lemonade. So now that we've got all our ingredients set, let's get things going because we got to oven bake those fries. So let's get cooking. We've done potatoes a handful of times on this show already, once. But what we're going to do is not your typical one inch cube for fries. What we're going to do is first preheat the oven to 450. And then what we're going to do is take this potato here, you want nice long potatoes this way, and we're going to cut about, you know, quarter inch slices off of the potato this way. And you got to do this real carefully. So that what we can do is you can bunch them up like a deck of cards, like that, and then slice down, slippery, that one, two, three. And you got a bunch of French fry shaped cuts. And of course, when we do those, we dump them into a bath of cool water to let that extra starch out of the potatoes. Dry your potatoes as best you can when drying them off, because all of that excess water that's left on the outside of the potatoes will inhibit optimum crispiness. So when you dry off your potatoes, a good way to do it is to lay them all out on the sheet that you're going to bake them on and then dry them with one big paper towel and you just stamp them and you dry them that way. I like to do it this way, it's a little more time saving, I just leave them all in the bowl that I'm going to cook them in, you know, dry the water that wells up at the bottom as much as you can. I'm sure I'm going to get put on blast for this, but in all reality, you just got to dry off the potatoes as best you can. Because after we're done with that, the seasoning for State Fair fries is very simple. We're going to keep it straight up. I am going to use a little bit of olive oil, though veggie oil is just as good. Pour a little bit of that around the potatoes there, get them nice and oiled up. And all we're going to use for State Fair fries is salt, a lot of salt, remember it's the State Fair, and pepper. Grind up the pepper into the bowl there. 
give them a toss. Now, these don't look as good as the home fries that we cooked in the, uh, the breakfast episode. But I'll tell you what, once we get the cheese and the bacon on these things, oh, my own. It's going to be out of this world, I'll tell you what. So now that you've got that all seasoned up as lightly as you want, as heavily as you want, grease a baking sheet lined with tin foil, and dump. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. We're about to anyway. We're about to cut up the chicken and lay out all of your fries flat on the baking sheet. That way they all brown the same way on the same level. And nice and flat. Yeah, your hands will get a little salty, a little greasy. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Take one of your kitchen towels, wipe that off. And then from here, put them on the top rack of your oven. And we're going to let them bake for 30 minutes. So before you get your state fair feast getting ready at home, what you've got to do is you've got to cut up the chicken into one inch pieces. Now this is where the one inch pieces is going to come into play, not the potatoes this time around. So what we're going to do, see that tender uh, tendon there, we're going to get rid of that. That's about a one inch piece, you're going to throw it in the bag. We're going to cut off right about there, you know, a lot of stuff that we don't need. Cut off. Yep, that's still a good piece of chicken there, one inch piece there. Now you can cut them up in any way you want. These are chicken breast tenders, so they're a bit thinner and a bit smaller. But if you have just chicken breast, cut them into these tender pieces and go from there. You know, just kind of fillet the breast a little bit and get yourself some more room to work with. Or some more chicken to work with, I guess. Remove that skin there. We don't need that. Cut. That's going to be a nice big chunk there. Cut another big chunk there. Oh yeah, all over the place. you got to love it. Remove that tendon. And another cut here. I think this is this and pork are the... No, we worked with sausage. This is the first time we've, we've used chicken on this show. How about that? So we're going to cut that there. Nonsense there, another one inch piece. Now, why the bag? I'm sure that's a perfectly valid question you may be asking yourself. Why the bag? Well, I'll tell you. What we're going to do is we're going to put all of the chicken into this Ziploc baggie here, and then once we have it all diced, cut, ready to go, we're going to pour the entire bottle of Speedy Sauce on it. And that's, that's where the magic happens. That's where the good stuff comes in. Because the speedy sauce, let me tell you, that is, that is some of the best stuff you'll ever eat. It is a Binghamton creation. And if you don't know what speedy sauce quite is, it's kind of like an Italian dressing, but also not even close. It does contain basil, oil, oregano, but it also has some crazy other spices in there like mint or thyme. And it's just absolutely delicious. And we'll, uh, yeah, it's a good size piece. We got one more to go here. Cut that tendon off. Uh, uh, um, uh, four, five, whatever. So, now that you have chicken, I know this bag is a little big for it. We're going to take this bottle here, whole thing right onto the chicken. Boom. Let that soak up. And we're going to let that sit while the potatoes cook because we still got to add all the cheese and everything on top of those. So now it's time for that state fair lemonade. You've got your chicken marinating in the fridge, your potatoes are getting going in the oven, so all you need are some lemons, some sugar, and some water. Now, you can remove the stickers from these, it's not like you're eating it like an apple. But just like with the limes on the taco episode, what you're going to do is you're going to take the lemon, and you're going to roll it out, put a lot of pressure on that lemon, and make sure that you're getting as much of that juice out of there as you can. Now, since <clears throat> I embarrassed myself during the taco episode, I got a juicer, so I don't look like so much of an idiot trying to squeeze a lemon. So, we got that one rolled out. We're, thanks, thanks, thank you. Take your lemon, cut it right in half. And now with the juicer, you can lay it right there. And squeeze. Get all of that good stuff. At least it didn't get in my eye. 
Squeeze all the good stuff out of there. You want as much juice out of that lemon as you can get. There's a little bit left on top there as well. Now, you can do this through a strainer you, if you don't like pulpy lemonade. But I prefer a little bit of pulp in my lemonade. Just... I don't think this thing works as well as they advertise it does. <laughs> this is terrible. Now we've got all that lovely, lovely lemon juice in there, freshly squeezed. We can move this back quite a bit. Now the best part about State Fair Lemonade is how much sugar they throw in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab myself a half a cup. Half a cup of sugar looks good for that, yeah. I think I'll do a little bit less than a half a cup, but... Just want to make sure it's nice and sweet. So you do a little bit less than a half a cup of sugar in there. Yeah. And then from there, take your water from whatever source you have derived it from and top the whole parade off. And essentially, right there, with a little bit of a stir, you've got yourself State Fair Lemonade. Now, I know. Oh, the sugar won't dissolve in cold water. Oh, you know, it's, it's not going to taste right. No, no, this is how the State Fair does it. If you go to the New York State Fair and you find one of the uh, kiosks, it looks like a lemon. Big, big lemon. And they serve these things they call lemonade tankers. And the lemonade tanker is a jug about this big, but rounder, and they make that whole thing full of lemonade. It's huge. It's massive. But the water's not hot. They don't prep any of that stuff. They squeeze the lemons right in front of you. Suck up a few of those sugar granules with some of the lemon seeds. That is the true State Fair experience. So, now that we have the Lemonade, all done up. You know what? I think I am going to strain that. I'm calling an audible. We're going to do this very carefully, mind you. Right into the measuring cup. Oh, no! Okay. Splashes of lemonade down, but we still have quite a lot left. Which is all that matters to me. So let's try that up. Had a bit of a spill. It's okay. It's not nuclear waste. Have your State Fair Lemonade all set to go. Your potatoes are in the oven, and your chicken is marinating. We're gonna throw it to break, but don't go anywhere. We still gotta cook that chicken and put it on a nice warm roll, and we gotta put the cheese on the potatoes. Stay tuned. Say, President Stanley, whenever there's bad weather, who would you turn to? I'd turn to Storm Team 10. No, right but here. you've got to say it like this. Storm Team 10. Say it with me. Storm, Storm Team 10. Jill told me it was Kitty from Glee. Yeah, what it's is it? Al Roker. <laughs> Thank you.
Welcome back to Bob's Dinner Bell. Potatoes are still cooking, but they're just about ready to be cheesed and baconed. The speedies have been marinating in the fridge, and our pan is hot. We're going to open these up real quick. What we're going to do, uh-oh, spilled the salt. It's got to go over your right shoulder, otherwise bad luck. So what we do, take a little bit of olive oil, just to get the pan greased up. You don't want your chicken sticking. And then just move it around a bit there, get it moving. And you want your pan at medium-high heat for this. They're not big pieces of chicken, so you want to get them nice and brown. And you want to get them, you know, not ready to go. And again, you can't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Reach in, grab a whole handful of those speedies right there, let them drip a bit. Boom! And let them go. Now, I'm going to move those around once I get the rest of the chicken in. But you can hear them hit the pan nice and hot, because when you go to the fair, these are usually cooked on a griddle. You know, a nice hot flat iron griddle. I'm going to throw the rest in there. Grab my last few pieces from the corners of the bag. Boom. Now, that's looking great. Ah, smells magnificent as well. Let me grab my pincers here and move these around a bit. Let them get there. Fair shake, it's some grill space. And now that my hand is covered in speedy sauce and chicken juice, we're gonna let those sit there for a minute while I wash up. Let these go, I'm gonna get a nice little bowl out here. Let me move my pop stir. Get a bowl out for these guys, plus the top for the bowl. Because these will still need you know, a few minutes to rest while the potatoes come out of the oven and we cheese them up and get ready to go. Now, of course, unfortunately, all of this liquid gold here of Speedy Sauce, we usually just toss out because it was all in raw chicken. It's a sad thing, I know, but, you know, it's what you got to do. It's how they're cooked. It's how everything works here. These are getting some nice color. It's like liquid gold. I know I called the, uh, the maple syrup from the breakfast episode liquid gold, but for the summertime, somebody pulls out a bottle of speedy sauce, and that's the other thing. Maybe you don't like chicken. Maybe you prefer beef. Maybe you prefer pork. Maybe you prefer venison. For those who don't know what venison is, it's deer meat. Speedy goes with just about everything. You can make steak speedies, chicken speedies, pork speedies. I think my family even made pheasant speedies one time. Hey, we had it, we tried it, and it was delicious, I'll tell you what. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> once you've got this rolling, you want to make sure all of your chicken pieces get to about 165 degrees internally. Now, with the temperature up so high, that won't take too long, but you still want to let them cook as much as you can. You don't want them tough, you still want them chewy, but you don't want them raw in the middle either. Last thing you want is to serve up raw chicken at a barbecue, then your public enemy number one. See? That there is still raw chicken. You don't want that. Raw chicken's not good for anybody. So while these cook, we are going to break out the potatoes. There's the big reveal on those. See how those are doing. Oh, yes. They look quite delicious. I like the stylized shots now. What we're going to do is we're going to turn these over a bit, you know, get everybody nice and crispy equally. Oh no! 200 degrees kills germs. So, now that you've got your fries cooked, what we're going to do is first we're going to take our little tiny bits of bacon here. You're going to open those up. Pour them all on the potatoes. You're going to take some of that cheese. Now I use, and this is from recommendation from my girlfriend Jess, use the sliced cheese. Sure, it doesn't get into the little nooks and crannies like shredded cheese does, but this will melt more evenly. Get rid of the paper there, you don't need that. And it will make a, almost like a blanket of cheese over your fries. And that's that's what we're looking for here, a nice, big, overarching, cheesy blanket to keep our friends, the potatoes, 
nice and warm. And on top of that, we can add a little bit more bacon. Because that's the stuff right there. And you know what we're going to do with these? We're going to throw them right back into the oven. So away we go. Into the oven they go for another 10 minutes. And now we're going to mess with our chicken again. Yeah, see? It's getting nice and browned on some of those edges there. That's, that's what we're looking for. That's where you get a lot of your flavor. You get a little bit of a crunch from it, too. It's just, oh, and it smells so good. Don't you agree? Oh, yeah. Uh, this is the best stuff. State Fair food at her finest. So you just, you know, flip them all. You can use a spatula. If you have a flat iron griddle, by all means, use that. That stuff's the best. Flip it all around. Get it nice and cooked on every possible edge that you can. If I bring out my, oh, it's not in there, my handy dandy thermometer. Go to the middle of the breast. You see the temperature rise to 171. So these are done. We're gonna stick them in this bowl here because, let me just double check. Let me make sure I'm not lying. Oh yeah, that's done chicken. That's what you're looking for. Pull apart, nice and white in the middle, nice and hot. Whoa, nice and steamy. That's good stuff right there. So we're gonna take all this out of the pan because this right here is the magic. There we go. Look at all that. Ah, not yet. <laughs> Sorry. We still have to do last eight minutes of the potatoes, though granted, I'll keep checking on those. None of these times are exact. If you watch this show and you think that the times have to be on the money every time, that's just not 100% true. If you're cooking something like potatoes and you decide to do them in an air fryer, perhaps, they're going to take a lot less time than they would if you do them in an oven. Look up the recipes. If what I give you isn't quite correct, Google it. Because, no, you're gonna rely on me? Oh, you people are so kind. Thank you so much. <laughs> but it'll vary. Check on things when you're cooking them. Don't be afraid to poke or split apart chicken. If you're doing steak, you can feel it with the tips of your fingers here. You see how rare or medium well or that kind of thing is done. With chicken, don't be afraid to pull it apart or check on it. Because you always want to make sure that everything's cooked through. Unless you're like me and you like your steak rare. But don't be afraid to pick at it. Don't be afraid to poke and prod. That's what it's all about. That's my preaching for the day. Looks like our fries are done. Oh, yeah. Now those are loaded fries. Nice and cheesy. You see that blanket just stretch over the whole lot. You got bacon in there. And we may not have done any other ingredients, but I'll tell you what. Not a better set of fries you'll have, especially because it's homemade. Okay. So. Mel, welcome to the show. I'm you happy. were the camera person for the first episode as well. I was. So, thank you for joining me on camera. You said that this is your first time having speedies. Yeah, I I can't believe I haven't had them before. I've heard that they're really good. Um, I heard that they can give you heartburn, but nah, I think we're gonna be good. I think we'll. Be I fun. think that was a poorly made speedy. Now we do need, of course, ice, ice? for the lemonade. If ah. You be so kind. I would love to, thank you. Of course. And while you're doing that, I'll get some of these uh, cheese fries ready for you. Here, let's, uh, nice big heaping helping there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> in there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let me see your plate. Yes, Chef. Boom. Cheese fries. Boom. Cheese fries. Now. So you know how you're fighting the lemons? Uh-huh. Yeah. Are you fighting the ice now? <laughs> yeah. Two is perfect. That's fine. All right, perfect. Now, That's all you, get. you take the lovely State Fair lemonade over ice. You 
Oh, yeah. Gotta love. Like Dash says in uh, the first Incredibles movie, I like it when it chatters. <laughs> so, now, the speedies. Onto the sandwich. I'll use a, I'll use a fork. I don't know what my pincers want, but they handle raw chicken, so I'm just gonna adjust this so it's nice. I'm just gonna dump it onto the bread. There's not much else that goes onto it. Yeah. Ready? Mm -hmm. Boom. There you go. And that. Wow, it smells so good. Is a New York State chicken speedy sandwich. Yes. And we shall have a bite. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Chicken's nice and tender. Mm -hmm. Still juicy. That speedy sauce. You can't beat the speedy sauce. I'm telling you. Ah, and the State Fair lemonade. He's on the money. Salo. Tastes fantastic. That's that's true state fair lemonade right there. Fresh squeezed. Nothing but water and sugar. That's so good. Gotta love it. Mm. I've been eyeballing these cheese fries. Because cheese fries. Cheese on it. <laughs> on the nose too. People eat cheese fries with a fork. I say forget that. I'm in my happy place. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. Well, and that's what I'm here for. That's what food's all about. An offer under twenty dollars, you can make yourself a state fair feast, including state fair style lemonade. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not sure if this is the last episode for this season, but I do want to say thank you once again to everybody who has helped with the show, Mel. Jacob Bradley, Garrett Chan, uh, Michelle Kuyashan, Brian Sacconi, my parents, my girlfriend, her friends, everybody, thank you so much. If we have another episode, stay tuned to Don's Dinner Bell. Who knows what we're getting? This. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hey there, I'm Al Roker, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching WTOP. <laughs>